Welcome to Violin Adventures number 174. This week is very exciting. We open up a violin from the Violins of Hope during the Holocaust. Okay, I love that it's tied with strings. All right, a wonderful note here, and I'm excited to work on this. Look at this violin. It needs to be restored. It's a very special violin. And on the back side, we have the Star of David inlaid. So right off, there is a crack right here. The middle seam is open, which means we've got to take this off and cleat this, glue it up and cleat it to make sure that it doesn't open again. Okay, right down here is the chip out of the edging, and the edging is just beautiful. So here's the edging, and we've got a chip out right here, so we'll have to replace that to match the rest of the violin. Okay, let's see what's inside. Well, nothing too interesting. We don't have corner blocks. The wood is very rough. We've got a nice block here, but it's slanted down. So we might want to replace that. The same with the top. Oh, there's our dust bunny. Now here on the top, we see this crack has been repaired before. Someone pumped glue into it. So we'll have to clean that out and fix it. We see also that this top was just quickly hewn out and this is a base bar hewn out of the top. So we got to get that base bar out. That's, that will improve the sound so much more. So I am so honored to be able to work on this violin. It is a violin of hope. What are the violins of hope? Those were instruments that were either saved during the Holocaust, we, people either found them or they were thrown out of the train or they were instruments that the Jewish people had owned and either had been taken away from them or family members had brought them to this special violin maker in Israel. And I met this man, Ammon Weinstein. He's who inspired me to take violins that might not have been of much value and to give them a new voice. When I went to visit him, he gave me this poster. This poster shows the violin and the heart of the violin is right there where the sound post and bridge and strings work together. When all of that is correct, the violin has such, such a beautiful sound. In the early 20th century, would put Jewish symbols on the violin. This is a beautiful Star of David in hopes that they would get hired for a Jewish wedding or uh, be able to play in the klezmer band, something like that. So these violins remind us of what happened during the Holocaust. It's a visual reminder and it's also an opportunity to bring the music back that we lost. So I'll be taking this violin and giving it a voice that it didn't have before. We can take these and improve them. Like you see here how the top wasn't finished it was just quickly made and that's how they were able to sell instruments at a cheaper price the faster they made them the cheaper it could be so we're going to take this and give it the time and love that it deserves to give it a voice that will a more expensive more professional sounding instrument that's what's so exciting we can not only bring it back to life, but give it that care and time that it needs. I remember another instrument that I repaired years ago, 
and this was an instrument that was very dark. The outside varnish was almost black. So I carefully, carefully removed that outside layer and what did I find underneath? There were Hebrew letters on the, on the uh, ribs all around here and then Hebrew letters up here in floating down. It was the most lovely instrument. When it got finished, the tone was gorgeous. So I am continuing this legacy of taking violins that have either been rejected or set aside or that just don't produce like they should and bringing the life back into them or bringing life into them that just wasn't there. Okay, we're gonna set the back aside and work on the top. First things first, I need to clean out this crack. It has some dirt in it and then glue it together. I need to do that first before I take out the base bar. This is gonna be a fun repair because we know we can improve the sound. Okay, we're ready to close up this crack. We've got all the dirt out and it's ready to go back together really nicely. We've warmed up our hot hide glue. Thinking about these beautiful violins of hope, I'm so grateful that you sent this here so that we can keep these alive. Keep the memory going. Remind us what happened. We need to enjoy life while we have it. Live it to the fullest. We're created for a purpose. Let's do what that purpose is. We all are created for a different purpose. We can keep on until God calls us home. Let's keep doing the purpose that he gave us to do. All right, we're gonna let that dry and while that's drying, we'll take a look at the, we're probably gonna to wanna to replace these two blocks because they're slanted downward and they don't have good contact with the top. I just cut some corner blocks for this violin. I wanna to add to its dignity, add to its value. When you think about these violins, you can't help think about the Holocaust and keeping alive that memory and encouraging people to understand what that was and how, how we can't let it happen again. The Holocaust was just finally the last straw. There had been persecution of the Jews for centuries before and it just kept building up in, until we had that horrible thing happen. My violin teacher, Michael Newman, his grandparents were killed in the Holocaust. He was able to escape and went to another country. This is my violin teacher. He was my teacher for many, many years. And of course, he was the best violin teacher I ever had. I really appreciated him. Well, his teacher is this man, Henry Meyer. I went to visit him about over 20 years ago. This is him in his home. And he let me take a picture of him. While he was in the concentration camps and the orders were to kill all the musicians, of course he was a famous violinist. So when the doctor saw him, he realized you just played a violin concert before he got arrested and he said i can't kill you i can't take your life he said so he went to the morgue got a name of another fellow and switched his name out and let him go back into the general camp area well he also had a famous pianist friend who was also in the camp, that fellow had all his fingers chopped off. So it's a much sadder story, but his life was preserved. And the reason why I bring all this up, it's just like this violin. We want to keep the memory going. We want to 
those of us who knew people that were in the Holocaust, we want to keep their story going. People need to hear what really happened. So here we're preserving this violin in memory of all of those who lost their lives. And a reminder for us live for the purpose that God made us and to keep standing for the truth okay our hide glue is hot we're gonna glue in these corner blocks okay we're gonna let these corner blocks dry okay, we're taking the clamps off of our beautiful violin of hope First, I will go ahead and get started on re-graduating this, getting out this base bar, which is carved out of the top real quickly. Let's take all this out. All right, we've got the graduations down. And now I've got my very nice aged wood I just cut down ready to fit a base bar. Okay we're ready to get the base bar in so we've got our hot hide glue. Time to take the clamps off and form our base bar. Well, here we are. We've got the base bar all, uh, all formed. It's got a nice curve in there. The sound is just, it's very responsive. So I'm excited for that. I didn't get video of me carving because I've been talking to the owner of this uh, violin. His name is Gerald Tackett from Missouri. He's retired and in his spare minutes, which he doesn't have a lot, he repairs mandolins. Okay, we've got a lower block fit and ready to go here. So the hot hide glue is all warmed up. Okay, the lower block is in. Next, I want to build up this upper block. Okay, hopefully that's going to add some stability to the neck. Okay, on second thought, this upper block is not attached underneath. So even though the angle was correct, I think the best thing to do is to take the block out and put in a block that fits properly. I was trying to do to use what we had, but I don't think that's the best choice in the long run because underneath is just hollow. I put that through wondering why it was moving so much and it's because there's hardly any contact under the block. So I am going to let this lower block dry. And then we'll see about getting this upper block out and replacing it. Well, while that is drying, I think it's a good time to have an anecdote from our Anecdotes of Great Musicians. And this was written in 1897. We have number 213, Not, Not at First Sight. There are different ways of singing at sight. So Handel found out one time on a visit to Ireland. He was detained at a certain point for several days and wishing to prove some copied parts of the Messiah, he arranged to have several choristers of the town where he was meet him and study the music with him. But one fellow failed so completely that Handel turned on him in wrath and cried, You scoundrel! Did you not tell me that you could sing at sight? Yes, sir, I did. Oh, I can, but not at first sight. 
Very many readers at first sight seem to be blessed with the gift of only second sight. <laughs> okay. The next one is entitled Beethoven a la Cupid. Beethoven was a man of stern and rugged disposition, a man whose exterior was rough and whose actions were frequently peculiar. But at the same time, he had a very gentle and kindly side to his nature. Those who did not happen to see his character displayed in that light thought him hard-hearted and boorish, but that was because they saw him at his worst. Beethoven was not adverse to helping other people. In 1811, Beethoven was staying at Top Leeds and took his meals at a certain inn where, as it happened, an actor named Lowe was accustomed to dine and at the same time engage in the enjoyable occupation of courting the landlord's daughter. The actor Lowe and his fair damsel had arranged that Lowe should come for his dinners after the other guests had gone and only Beethoven remained. They calculated that he would not be an offensive third party because of his deafness. But as the stories generally go, the irate parents stepped in and ordered the actor to discontinue his visits. This he was compelled to do and for a time the lovers were disconsolate. But who ever knew of an actor so easily discouraged? Lowe was seized by a bright idea. He met Beethoven on one of his daily walks, having purposely taken the road frequented by the master. Beethoven recognized him and at once asked why he had deserted the inn. This gave Lowe a chance to tell his tale of woe and to timidly ask Beethoven to take charge of a letter to the maiden. Why not, pleasantly observed the gruff composer. You mean what is right. He placed the note in his pocket and started off without taking any more notice of the actor. Lowe started after him saying, I beg your pardon, Herr von Beethoven, that is not all. Well, what then, said the master. You must also bring back the answer. Well then, meet me here at this time tomorrow. And again, Beethoven started on his way. As may be imagined, Lowe was promptly at the place next day and received from his lady love the reply at Beethoven's hands. And in this way, the greatest of composers continued to serve the lovers as long as he stayed in that place. Well, that's all the anecdotes for this week. We'll have some more next week. Okay, we're working on getting this neck out so we can put a good solid block in there. Another package. Okay, another box has arrived. All right, this is beautiful. I love this song from Mendelssohn. Thanks for sending it. I love Elijah, the oratorio of Elijah. There's so many beautiful pieces in there. Those are nice little surprises. Now, on this special violin from the 1800s, at one point in its life, it had gotten covered with a very thin varnish. Okay, so what I did is I tested a some of the rib area and got the varnish off. And so this weekend, I'm gonna work on getting the varnish that's on here off. And then next week, we'll open it up and try to discover what all is going on with this violin. I did check the angle of the neck and it is way too low. So we'll bring that up. Here's, a very, here's an old repair and it looks like it was done nicely, but we might have a little bit of trouble, we'll see, getting that neck out, but, but that's all part of what we have to do. So I'm going to work on the varnish now, and then next week we look forward to, it will be quite an adventure. <laughs>
Working on the pochette. And Freddie wants to chat. He's so excited because he got a visit from Mrs. Faye Jacobson and he couldn't sit still. He couldn't practically contain himself. Hi, hi. I, I, I'm Freddie. Hi, Freddie. How are you today? I, I, I'm good. You came to see me. Yes, I did. Me. Yes, I do. Wow! I, I, I'm just learning everything right now. Yes, and so what do you like to do, Freddie? Well, I see, I, I have an apron on because I'm a violin maker. Okay. Yeah, I like to watch everybody do everything. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So, tell me a little bit about yourself, Freddie. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Oh, I know. Where do you live? I live in Kansas. That's about 12 hours away from here. Wow! 12 hours! And you drove the whole way! Yes, we did. Wow! So, are you working on any projects right now? Yes, I'm doing some paintings. Mm. And I'm making cards. Wow. And Christian t-shirts. Yeah. And I'm going to start sewing a quilt. Well, a quilt? What's a quilt? It's a um, blanket made out of little scraps of material in, de in decorative form. Oh, wow. I want one. Yes, I should make you one. Yeah, wow. Okay, that's a great idea. Okay, I'll make you one, Freddie. Wow! Okay, and Freddie? Yeah? When we send in pictures uh -huh. or videos, can we send other things besides making vi violins? Oh, yes, please! Send in any project that you're working on. It can be anything, because I like to learn things. Okay, that sounds good. Maybe I'll send you some pictures. So what are you going to do today, Freddie? Well, since it's Friday, I have to get my part of the video all done. And so I'm really glad that you came to visit me. I'm so happy. Well, I'm glad to visit you too, Freddie. It's good to see you. Well, thank you. And I'll see you next time. Okay. Bye, Freddie. The Hebrew Minute. Kol Hani Kra Bishmi, Velika Vodi Barativ Yatsartiv Af Asitiv. Everyone who is called by my name, I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yes, I have made him. Now there's three words here that are awesome. I have created him is bara. The root is bara, which is 
only used in connection with God because only he can create out of nothing. So he created us. He formed us. This is for a purpose. We were created for a purpose and he made it happen. If you know where this is found, please leave it in the comments below. Well, this is Friday and you can hear the rain. We're going to have a lot of rain coming next week too. So let's go inside where it's dry. Well, here inside you can see we've got all those outside instruments. We're repainting them and getting them ready to go back out. And then over here at what used to be our cello table has gone down to this little tiny corner where we're carving the back of our pochette. And here are the pieces. We've got the edges done. Here's the top and there's the scroll. Now this is our special violin of hope. We've got the new bass bar in and now we just put in a new lower block and we decided to remove the neck and get a proper block up here. I just got the block out and it's good we took it out. This is going to give it um, more stability. So, we And over here is our special violin from the 1800s. I just removed the bare thing that was on there and we're going to just let this air out and next week we'll get started on finding out what all is inside that violin that will be very interesting thank you so much for watching thanks for sending in your instruments thank you for your thumbs up thank you to the new subscribers and until next time bye